Hey guys, welcome to the third part of the ASCII RPG tutorial. If you're new here, be sure to check out the first two parts and my challenge for this game. Alright, so far we have the main menu, the idle screen, the saving and loading, and also the map and the movement setup. Next we'll make the enemies and the fighting, then the potions. Let's go! So first let's make a list of the enemies that we want in our game. This list will hold keys like the map list, but we will use these keys as the names of the mobs as well. Then we make a dictionary for them. This process should feel familiar if you watch the second part. We will give the following stats to the enemies. HP as health points, AT for attack damage, and Geo for gold gained from them. I'll paste the other ones, you can play around with these values. Also I'll include here the boss too, but I won't put it into the enemy list since we don't want it to spawn randomly. Now we create our next function, which is the battle, but we leave it empty first. We go back to the play loop and let's see how can we call it properly. Enemies will have some chance to spawn on a tile exactly when we arrive there. So we have to call the battle before we print out all the stuff. First we have to check if the type of tile can spawn enemies or not. Remember, the E key of the tile is responsible for that. If it's true and we don't include any other condition, enemies will spawn at a 100% rate there. But we're more cool than that and we spice up the game with random numbers. For this we import the random library at the top. Then we use its randin function which will give us a random number between the limits we specified that are 0 and 100 now. So if this random number between 0 and 100 is let's say smaller than or equals to 30, we encounter an enemy. We will call that into the battle function that we can call right here. And we'll use another while loop that will run while our next boolean, the fight, is true. It will be false by default. But there's a little problem here. We start at a tile which can spawn enemies. So there's a chance for an instant fight when we get into a new game. To avoid this, we make another if statement which uses the standing bool. This is true by default, so if we start the game, we are standing. But we can encounter enemies only if we are not standing, meaning we move around the map. So if our coordinates change, we should set this to false. Now let's test it and see if the fight occurs. We start a new game, move around, and there it is. Alright, let's make the actual battle. Let's pick an enemy first. This will be random too and we'll use the choice function of the random library. So we pick a random enemy from our enemy list. Then we save its stats to these local variables. We ask for the HP key and save it as the HP value. We set its max HP too. Same for the others. Now we make the loop. Remember, if the battle is called, the fight is true. And since we will change some global values, we have to call them into the function. These are the fight play, run, HP, potion number, elixir number and gold. Now let's stylize the fight screen like the main menu and the idle screen. I advise to only show the healing options if we have the required items. So now the screen is set up, let's make the inputs. If we type 1, we should attack the enemy. It's simple, we lower its HP with our attack points. We can print it to the screen with text, so we dealt some damage to the current enemy. Then comes the counter-attack, but only if the opponent is still alive. Then we hold it on the screen. Let's see what we created. New game. Move around. Ah, there's an orc. You can see the stats got printed out as we wanted. We have one potion, but we can't use it since we did not code it yet. Also we don't see the elixir input since we don't have any, but we can attack. The health points above get updated at the start of every cycle. Let's see who wins. Hmm, <laughs> no one, of course. Let's make that part next. If our HP goes down to zero, we get really sad and print it to the screen. We set the fight, the play and the run to false, then say game over. One last input, but still, this will print out the idle screen since the fight happens at the start of the play loop. I'll set our HP to 5 so we can die fast and see it. Ok, now it's game over, but there are the stats, we don't want that. So we either put the quit here, or we print the idle stuff to the screen only if the play is true. Now if we check it, we get killed and the game quits as intended. Great, now go for the other version. We'll defeat the enemy this time, so if its HP goes down to zero, we're happy and say it loud. The bulls will be false again and we get some gold now. Since we are generous, we give the players some chance to get a potion from the fights. Similar statement like the mob spawning. If it happens, we increase the potion number with 1 and communicate it. Ok, let's check it with the buff damage so we win fast. 
Here's the orc again, now we smash its face. There we go, we get our date in gold. Let's try one more. Again, nice. Now we get to the last part, which is the healing. Let's code it. If we have more potions than zero, we can use that two input in the fight to heal. We withdraw one from the potion number and get into the healing function that we create right now. We will pass the heal amount as the argument. Since we changed the HP, we call it again like last time. If the amount heals us below the max HP, we simply add them up. Otherwise, we set our HP to the maximum. Again, we communicate it. Now we can call it. We pass 30 as the argument, since the potion heals that much. Then, the enemy still has its turn, so it attacks us. If the player has no potions, we can tell it to them. The input is done, let's modify it to use the elixir too. Testing time. Now we have 20 HP, let's use the potion. It refilled us to 50, great. We can see the no potions text is working too. Now we can let the player use potions outside the fight too. We print here the prompt options, but only if the player has the items. So if the dest is 5, we use a potion, and if it's 6, we use an elixir. Basically the same as in the battle. Last important thing. If we use these items on the map, we should set the standing boolean to true, so enemies won't attack us while standing on the same tile. Same goes if, let's say, your kitty cat comes and makes random inputs on your keyboard. Then you'll be standing still and the game waits for a valid input. Now the last check. Let's use a lot of items. Ok, it's working just as we wanted them. Great progress so far. Thank you for coming along. In the last part we'll make the shop, the mayor who has the boss key, then the boss fight. Hope you enjoyed the video, see you soon. Stay safe and take care.